I ask you to say hymn book, turn to number 303. Number 303. <clears throat> Let us stand. Number 303. <clears throat> oh.
Amen, choir. Thank you so much. Let's all stand together as the youth choir comes up. Be sure to turn around and shake hands one with another. Amen. You may look this way. Thank you so much for uh, being here tonight, visitors. Thank you for coming. And Brother Jimmy's got a good friend of his, Jeremiah. Thank you for being here tonight. See some other folks in the back. Thank you so much for being here. And other folks visiting, thank you for being here. And it's just good to be in the Lord's house. Looking forward to what God has for us. And we got several announcements for you tonight before our team choir sings. Uh, the area around the gym, you obviously noted, is uh, with caution tape. So please. Uh, do not walk on or park near that, uh, that tape to stay off the, uh, the asphalt and cement that's been poured there. And uh, gift cards for Mother's Day. Um, I got a note here. I just read it. This is, this is the announcement. Uh, be sure to bring folks Sunday. Mothers, get your family here. And, of course, the mother with the most family will be uh, given a gift card. And then I think we got, Miss Carla, how many places do we have? Two? Miss Carla exit the building again. <laughs> Wonderful. She went around. So I think we have two places there. And it'll be bringing folks, inviting. What a good day to bring someone. And what a good day for somebody to get saved. Amen? <laughs> Mother's Day. And so you bring folks, invite your family. And some, sometimes this is the only day of the year that you could get your kids, your maybe grandkids, in church with you. And I would do it. I'd ask them. And if they ask you for money, you can ask them to go to church. Amen. And uh, so you, yeah. <laughs> got some amens on that one for the first time. And uh, Sunday school teacher and worker meeting after the service tonight, uh, May the 8th and the 9th, Youth Revival with Randy Dignan. That's this week, 7 o'clock, Thursday and Friday. And I want everybody to be here, be inviting folks. And no matter your age, this is a church-wide meeting, so you be here, invite folks. If you know of any uh, teens possibly down your road or that you uh, are friends with, friends of your family, invite folks, uh, get them here, and we'll have a good time together. Of course, the combo choir of uh, Trinity Baptist and New Manor will be singing Thursday night, and then our youth choir will be singing on Friday. And so please keep that in mind. You be here, support the meeting. Uh, Saturday morning visitation at 10 a.m., then men's fellowship Saturday, May the 10th. Got a lot going on Saturday at 11 a.m., and men will need to bring sides. I think the last I checked was Sunday uh, night, and I only saw maybe one or two sides listed. And I can promise you for 39 people, that's not going to be enough, okay? 
and I don't want to, I don't want one person fixing for that many people. So, uh, Brother Richard Roberts, would you go check the list to make sure, see how many sides are listed. This is the list for uh, the men's fellowship. It's back there on the table. See how many signed up to bring food. They'll just say a side on there. And uh, so I know we're going to need several. Can anybody bring a side? If you, I'm, I'm going to put your name down so we'll know who to fuss at if you don't do it, all right? And uh, Brother Jimmy, okay, all right. Anyone else? Okay, Miss Martha, all right. <laughs> I'm coming after you, Miss Martha. <laughs> yeah. Five, we got five sides. Okay, that's not enough. Okay, a side or dessert, Brother Joel, okay. Joel, okay, who else? Okay, I'm sorry, Miss Sanders. Okay, Miss Turner. Is that true, Miss Turner? <laughs> okay, 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 Brother Jerry. Okay, that's one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven sides. That's pretty good right there. And uh, desserts, anybody help us with desserts? Brother Eddie, can you help us with dessert? Great, dessert. Yes. Okay, Brother Clinton. <laughs> we'll save that in case we need it, okay? <laughs> this baby, okay. Dessert, okay. Brother Sam, okay. Is that Brother Dwayne? Okay. Okay, anyone else? Martha again, okay. You just getting Randall good. Did you have a rough week this week or something? <laughs> oh, boy. See that? Okay, Miss Templeton. I think that's good. I think that'll be enough, and that'll be good. Thank you so much, and I appreciate that. We'll have a great time together. We'll be meeting here at 11 o'clock uh, for the men's fellowship. Then we'll be going off-site for the skeet shooting. And those of you uh, who, who thought we were shooting here at the church, you're glad about that. Amen? And then we'll be shooting off-campus, all right? And so we'll give you the instructions when you get here on Saturday. And we're going to have a good time. And I appreciate Brother Steve uh, getting this together and uh, the fellows cooking. And we're going to have a good time together. And so, men, you come. Even if you're not shooting or not, not uh, involved in skeet shooting, just come, fellowship with us, eat, and we'll have a devotional. And, and then uh, uh, you can come watch folks shoot. Amen. And we'll have a good time, I know. Uh, Teen singing as well on Saturday, May the 10th. What time do they need to leave, Brother Fred? Okay, so you can come at 11, eat lunch, do the skeet shoot, and then go get on the bus to go sing at Meadows. You can get it all in. Amen. And, uh, and if you work in the widow's ministry, the Mother's Day corsages and flowers be ready to pick up in the old cafeteria and deliver uh, to your widow Saturday at 10 a.m. So that's Saturday, this Saturday, after 10 a.m. Please get these and make the visit, all right? And that's what it's for. So you get the, get the corsages, take them, and make that visit, if you will. And then the Friends and Family Luncheon Bouquet of Blessings, Saturday, May 17th at 11 to 1 p.m. Special speaker, Miss Vanessa Tilly, 750. Please see Miss Zena Wilma. Pray for Miss Vanessa. And I just pray that God will touch her and help her. I know she's had a rough time. They are in the process of selling their home. That's a blessing. And so praise the Lord for that. Been praying for that for some time now. So continue to pray. Uh, for them, and you pray for the teen choir as they sing tonight.
Amen. Great job, young people. Wasn't that good? Amen. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, I like that one about the Lord Jesus. Amen. He is refreshing, isn't he? Praise the Lord. Wonderful. And a great job tonight. Amen. All right. Teen ushers, if you'll come on and get ready, guys. Zane, are you holding everybody up tonight? I'm teasing. Amen. Well, it's good to be saved. Good to be in the Lord's house tonight. Good to be here. I'd rather be here than, than over where my good friend is in Moldova, fearing for his life. And uh, right there around all the fighting in Odessa and been to the Black Sea right there. Right, right, they're right there close, 45 miles from all the, all the, uh, all the fighting. And uh, just thankful that, thankful I'm in America. Thankful I'm in North Carolina. Thankful I'm in Forsyth County. Thankful I'm in Rural Hall, North Carolina. Amen. And thankful for all of it. And uh, Brother Mark, we prayed for you. And I appreciate you. Appreciate all you've done. And uh, praise the Lord. If I'd have had my way, I'd have, I'd have went down there and done something about all that. But I, I couldn't get it done for you. And amen. It was a good day. And I appreciate all that Brother Baker did uh, yesterday. And I hope all of you voted. And if you didn't, shame on you. And uh, somebody didn't vote because I think the total turnout was... What was it? Somebody hit me. 24%, Brother Mark? 14%. It's worse than I thought. Wow. Now, if everybody in this church voted that should have voted, it would probably been better than 14 cents. 14 cents. 14%. 14 <laughs> That's about what it's worth, 14 cents. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Wow. I know I went in to vote, and I mean, I, at 5.36, I said, baby, it's going to be bad. Yeah. I said, pray for me. I'm getting ready to go in here. I pulled in. She said, well, call me and let me know. I, I only have a few minutes. said, if it's too long, I'm just going to not be able to vote. She was already frustrated. You know? And been working all day, had a program at night, didn't have five minutes between the two. And so... Uh, I pulled in, I said, six cars. She says, hallelujah, I'm on my way. <laughs> and I think that was the workers and the poll workers. There wasn't nobody in front of me, nobody in front of me, and she came behind me, right? Time I left, she was coming in behind me. And she flew down the road, she did, yes. But uh, anyway, uh, I, hope, uh, I hope that wasn't us. I hope everybody in here was out voting and um, it's one thing. That if you didn't vote, you have no right to say anything bad about anything. Amen. I'm not going to say anything bad much anyway because it don't do any good except to the Lord. But uh, anyway, let's, let's be much in prayer. Uh, all for tonight, I mentioned on Sunday night, this is being taken to take care of a need for Brother Fredericks. The total amount of the need is right at $2,300, and this was unexpected and definitely unwelcome. And as I mentioned on Sunday night, it wasn't due to uh, mismanagement. It's not due to not getting paid enough. It's just simply one of those things that comes out of left field and knocks you for a loop. And uh, I want to help him. I don't want him to go back in debt to get to, to take care of this here or go into more debt to take care of this. So uh, we want to do that tonight. And the deacons have recommended that whatever amount we do not take up in here, that from benevolence we make the difference. Can I get a motion to accept that recommendation from the deacons, Brother Sam first, Brother Tim Walker a second. All in favor on that. The total again, 2300 So whatever we don't get, uh, then we'll take out of benevolence. Does everybody understand that? Can I see a show of hands one more time? So I want to finish getting, okay, good, great. Any opposed on that? Okay, great, wonderful. Thank you so much, and I know uh, they deeply appreciate this, and I wanna, wanna help them all I can, I love them. And I thank the Lord for them and all they do. And I just want to be a blessing to them. And I thank you for taking part of that. And that's why I want to take the offering and just to give you an opportunity. You say, Preacher, I don't have it. Well, uh, okay, that's fine. But uh, those who want to help, want, want to take care of this, uh, you're welcome to do that. And the remaining balance will be taken care of out of benevolence. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then we'll take up the offering. All right, Brother Philip. Philip, y'all know he announced his call to preach, right? Does everybody know that on Saturday? Isn't that a blessing? Amen. I need to get my picture made with you, Brother Philip. Amen. All right. You pray for us, please. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your wonderful time that you've given us. And uh, pray to us. Bless the remainder of this service. Be with the uh, 
Brother Frederick says he preaches tonight and uh, be with this offering tonight. Be with the gift and the giver. And if anyone's here that's not saved, Frederick will save him before it's eternally too late. And thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Have your Bibles open. And uh, young people are going to sing. And Brother Fredericks is going to come preach for us. And I'm looking forward to it. And let's pray together and ask God's blessing on the song. And then he'll come to preach for us. Father, we thank you for this night. Lord, thank you for this group of people. I pray that you'll bless them. God, I know they've worked hard today. Pray you'll Lord, give them the rest tonight they need. But for this moment of time, I pray that you'll draw a circle around our hearts. Help us to focus. Lord, help us to get what you have for us now. In Jesus' precious name, amen.
wonderful, great job, ladies. And uh, thank you all the ones who worked with the teen choir, Brother Daniel, Miss Christie, and everybody. And tremendous, tremendous. Matthew chapter number 26. Matthew chapter 26. Teen choir, let's be here at 6.30 on Friday, please, so we could uh, rehearse and practice one more time. Brother Daniel, Miss Christie will do a great job with that, of course. And so 6.30 on Friday, so we could practice for our 7 o'clock service. And as Preacher mentioned, on Saturday, going to Meadows to uh, sing for Brother Ricky Craig and uh, his youth rally they're having there. Uh, they're going to feed us afterwards, but I understand a lot of you want to get coffee, ice cream, and milkshakes and stuff. So we'll swing by dairy on the way back. And uh, we'll have that. So bring money for that if you'd like after the service. And then uh, for the youth rally tomorrow and Friday, a uh, preacher and I would like to provide a nursery. And uh, so we'll need some ladies who could volunteer for that. If you could do us a favor and just contact the office tomorrow so Carla can get a record of the names and who's down there. And uh, some groups are coming from a distance, so they might get here early. And uh, we may want to have nursery workers down there you know, 20 till, quarter till easily, and uh, to make sure we're down there to help for these groups that are some of them bringing their children. If you could do that, contact the church office, let Carla know you're willing to help in there, and we'll make a list of that. Matthew chapter 26, I'll quickly get into the message. I'm aware of the clock. Don't worry, we'll be fine this evening. As we get ready to look here, I want to say that I thank the Lord for His goodness. I've lived in North Carolina long enough to know that that's how you start your testimony service. I just want to thank the Lord for saving my soul and uh, for being so good to us. And uh, Miss, uh, I speak for Miss Debbie and myself that we love our church, we love our pastor, but ultimately we love our Savior. And thank you, church, for what you're doing for us. And uh, we don't deserve it, but uh, uh, we are very, very, very grateful for what you've just done with that offering. Um, God is working in the life of your youth pastor. And uh, I've given you my testimony, how I grew up in California, and I know that freaks many of you out. California! And, uh, but God did save me. All right, I promise. And uh, God, through His hand, worked His way for my wife and I to come here to North Carolina. But I will say this, that God's plan is perfect. And when I became a Christian at age 18, uh, I didn't understand why then, but... I was advised to go to a Bible college in Crown Point, Indiana. I wanted to stay in California as much as some of you kids who graduate from high school here want to stay in North Carolina. I wanted to stay home too. But God had a plan for me, and I look back now and see it was the best thing for me. Had I stayed in California, I probably would have gone back to the weak and beggarly things that Paul wrote about to the Galatians. I probably would have just got back in that rut. But God placed me in an area and kind of, I would say this, placed a fraternity of, of men around me. And as a new Christian, uh, I just got in the bus ministry there and started working and fellow bus workers and bus captains became my close friends. They became my mentors. Now they're all serving the Lord in ministry. Probably my best friend in college and still today probably is Pastor Joe Vasek, who pastors up in the Northeast. And then there was John Shook, who pastors down in Ashboro now. Paul Fielder, who works at a Christian school there uh, in Indiana. Um, Carlos De Leon, who's an assistant pastor in Brooklyn, New York. Danny Mendez, who is a uh, college professor there in Crown Point, Indiana. And uh, Mike Clark, who was a fellow bus worker with me, worked on the same bus route as us. And uh, Keith Wall, he pastors close to the coast and uh, he was a bus captain there, and, and uh, men like that, Adam Longo, who pastors in Batesville, Arkansas. This means nothing to you, but let me lay this foundation for the message, please. And these men uh, were my mentors. They were the ones when I was in Chicago, Illinois, and my Quicksilver windbreaker wasn't enough to keep me warm as winter was coming around. Told me, and you would say, pull your bootstraps up. You would say, be a man. But in their own ways, they, they, they told me to grow up and, and to, to learn to be a man in their realm and way. And uh, I wanted to quit so many times, and these men were my friends. One of them I did not mention was a bus captain also there, but his name was Jesse Dominguez. And I mean this with all my heart that these men, God placed them in my life for such a time as that. And uh, they helped me. They taught me how to win souls. They taught me how to have a desire to live for God and serve God. And um, again, I'm saying this because God's working in the life of your youth pastor that um, we got some terrible news from one of our friends, our buddies, our brothers in arms, as we would say. 
And uh, Jesse and Julie, like the Fredericks, have three children. And their oldest, Megan, is the same age as Tim. And on Friday of this last week, she just wasn't feeling well. They took her to get checked out at the doctor's, and they just thought it was normal flu-type symptoms. And so they gave her something and sent her home. On Saturday, she passed out, and they got her up and going again and just let her lay at the house and relax a little bit. And Sunday morning, when they got ready to get ready for church and everything, she was vomiting blood. So they rushed her to the emergency room, and uh, at that time... They said, we'll keep her here overnight, and then we'll take her to Chicago um, in the afternoon. And at 5.01 a.m. that morning, God saw fit to bring Megan home, that 16-year-old daughter. And um, my wife texted me, and we were at lunch, I think Preacher and I with Brother Buddy, and uh, I saw that from my wife, and my heart just fell into my stomach. I'm 42 years old. And I've never had an immediate family member pass away. I know you can say, oh, well, you sure are blessed. But I am aware that it's going gonna, it's gonna to snowball at some point or another. I am aware that maybe in the future, preacher, you're going to announce Brother Fredericks is going back to California again because another family member passed. I know it's going to happen. And, um, but when I heard about Jesse, that, uh, that felt like family to me. And um, and it showed me that, uh, Jimmy, when your mama went home to be with the Lord, I really felt for you. But I had more I could have felt for you, and I'm sorry. Miss Vicky, when Roy went home to be with the Lord, I really felt for you. I even wept. But this taught me I had more to give to you, and I'm sorry. And to the Freedom Baptist Church, I simply say I'm sorry. But God has shown me through this trial here, this trouble, as we could say, that I could have done more. I could have done more to pray to be a comfort to you. And that's what God showed me, okay? And I'm not here looking for sympathy. I'm just saying God's working in the life of your youth pastor. I can be a better friend to my friends. I told Joe we were talking on the phone and we were just weeping with each other and praying. And, you know, I said, Joe, I feel so badly that it's an event like this that gets us to finally talk to one another. And he said the same back to me. God has worked in the life of your youth pastor as he's already done with our pastor, who's so good at this, of expressing his love towards us as church members. And you know that. Whether it's a text message or a phone call from your preacher, you feel that love that he speaks of behind this pulpit. And maybe it's my personality. Maybe it's I'm always smiling and laughing and cutting up a lot. And some of that does come with working with young people. But I do want to let you know that the Fredericks family does love not just the teenagers of Freedom Baptist Church, but we love the membership of Freedom Baptist Church. We want to do a better job of expressing that to you because God showed us something in this. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. I'm speaking tonight on this topic, what to do when life gets tough. The Bible says in verse 36, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to, sorrow, to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Father, this evening I'll be brief to the point. I pray that the church members can see this truth as well as you taught it to me over these last several days. Help me to be a blessing to these folk is my prayer. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Familiar story. I told this to our Sunday school class. The amazing thing was 
Jesus was obedient as a son to know what was going ahead. He was the omniscient, all-knowing son of God, but he was also the obedient son of God. And it was almost like we do or as our children would do. Mom, can I go to Carowinds with the buddies and friends? No, you can't go. All right, okay. Now, they already know the answer, but maybe just what's one more time going to hurt? I mean, I already know you're going to say no, but Mom, I just, hey, I, I know, I, I was just wondering, I know you're leaving right now, you got a whole lot of things on your head, so maybe I just, hey, can I go to Carowinds? You know, that one last ask. And I think that's where Jesus was here, realizing that his time was now come. Knowing that in a, in a few moments he'd be betrayed and taken and tried falsely and all this. And I wonder if the humanity of Jesus was like in us when he just said, Father, um, are you sure this is what you want to do? This is the plan, right? There's no other way. If it be possible, is there another way? But, but, but not my, let's say, hey, not me, whatever your will, I'll do. And we all know that in the obedience of that, he went through with it, knowing what was ahead of him. Think about that with our lives. If we just know there's traffic on this route, we're taking a totally different route. <laughs> if we see four cars ahead of us with red lights, we're looking in the side view mirror to see if we can get in that next lane right away. That's us. And knowing what was before him, he set his face like a flint and said, I, I, I've got to go to the cross. Amen. And so with that thought in mind, what to do when trouble comes, I do want to remind us as a church, I'm not the doomsday preacher. I'm not here to say, oh, here it comes. But I do want to remind us that man is born of woman, is few of days, and full of trouble. Before you start saying, well, I like this one preacher because he says once you give your life to Christ, everything's going to work out fine. It's all going to be a zippity doo dah lifestyle. That does sound nice on the TV, and it may get a lot of people in a building, but it ain't Bible. Job 14.1, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. But the good thing about the trouble we face is if you continue to read in Job chapter 1 verses 9 through 12, I'm summarizing here so don't think I'm quoting, but it's a phrase I wrote in my Bible from my pastor way back when when he said this, all of our fiery trials are father filtered. Though our days are filled with trouble, it's no surprise to God. He's not up there playing, you know, croquet in heaven, and then all of a sudden an angel comes in and goes, hey, hey, did you hear what happened to so-and-so down there? He goes, oh, my goodness, are you serious? Wait a minute, when did that happen? That's never going to happen. Because all of our fiery trials are father filter. Trouble is God's heavenly sandpaper to smooth out our rough edges. Trouble is God's heavenly sandpaper to smooth out our rough edges. So why does God allow us to face trouble? And trouble can be summed up in anything you want to say. It could be trouble at work, trouble in the home, trouble at the church, trouble in your own personal life, trouble with your neighbor. Tr trouble can be anything, okay? Trouble can be the loss of a loved one. Trouble can be the loss of a friend. Trouble can be a transfer at jobs. Trouble can be, it can be almost anything. And so, though I'm not saying this one particular thing is a result of it, I do know this, that sometimes trouble is allowed in our life for God to, to get our attention, you want scripture, 2 Chronicles 15, 3 and 4. For sake of time, let's not turn there, but let me read it for you. Now for a long season Israel hath been without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. You know, he is the God of the mountaintop, but he does remind us he's the lily of the valley because it's in the valley too many times that we really seek him because on the mountaintop, we don't seem to need him. 
And sometimes God allows us to go through trouble to remind us to get our attention. Secondly, why does God allow us to face trouble? To strengthen our faith. To strengthen our faith. I encourage you, we, we taught through this in our Sunday school class, I think 32 lessons. Uh, Justin's not in here. Uh, but, but 32 lessons on the miracles of Christ. And at the end of every miracle, we stop to see what the purpose of that miracle was. It wasn't just to heal a leper. It wasn't just to heal the sick and to rise up and take thy bed. If you'll always read the miracles, look for that last thing that says, and their faith was increased. Sometimes God performed the miracle. Yes, he was a help to that individual, but to help those disciples go, whoa. And it strengthened their faith. Sometimes we just get comfortable. We just expect God's going to do something. I mean, we go to Freedom Baptist Church. It's the grace of God that he meets with us every service like he does. Amen. Don't get comfortable with it. Amen. Let's still have times of prayer on Saturday night, begging and asking God to be at our services on Sunday morning. Let's still pack out these prayer rooms for men's prayer, and ladies' prayer, and teen prayer time downstairs to say, Oh, God, first prayer request is Drew Tucker in here. He helps take the request for our, uh, to, uh, our teenagers. And the first one is always, All right, who's got the first one? Six hands go. Shh. Evening service. Pray for our preacher. Pray for the choir. Pray for the music. Pray for the mess. All right, we'll pray for evening service. Then somewhere along the lines, it's country, troops, and president. All right, we'll pray for the country, troops, and presidents. And then we start getting into the request. Strengthens our faith. I, pray, I hope that we realize when we go to these prayer rooms and ask God to do things that we remember when he does answer those prayers. Amen. You know, as parents, how tough we can be on our kids at birthday and Christmas. Did you write those thank you notes? Oh, you better write those thank you notes. No son of mine, no daughter of mine is not going to show gratitude. How are we doing on those requests that God answers on showing gratitude? Oh, we'll spell, oh God, be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so, be with so-and-so, be with, woo! God does it, and we just, we spend 13 days praying for the request. God answers it, and we spend 26 seconds just praising him and thanking him. Strengthen your faith. Allows us to go through trouble to get our attention, to strengthen our faith. Psalm 9:9. the Lord also will be a refuge to the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Little faith will bring your soul to heaven. But great faith will bring heaven to your soul. Let's, how are you doing growing in faith? I challenge our teenagers like this a lot. When was the last thing you did in your life that required faith? Has it been a week? A month? I mean, we just go into the house and flip the switches on, no problem. We got electricity. We just go out to the car and stick the key in the ignition, start her up, and we go. Now, maybe one or two of us in here might have a car to where we go out there, and that's when the prayer life really begins. <laughs> oh, Lord, please. I really don't want to push start this thing on the side of the road with my coworker staring at me. Please, 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 please. <clears throat> oh, Lord, I promise I'll never do that again. I'll never watch that show. I'll never turn that station on. <clears throat> okay, God, I'll clean out the refrigerator and no more. I'll just. <clears throat> yeah, and all of a sudden we forget about the prayer request we just had. Sometimes God allows us to go through trouble to strengthen our faith. I know this is to be true. God allows us to go to trouble, and this is where it helped me, to be a comfort to others. To be a comfort to others. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted. Brother Jimmy, I don't know how many people he told the story to, but about your visit in Northeast and everything. Brother Jimmy went uh, up to do some extra training or something and, and got up there and, and uh, was looking for a church to go to on Wednesday. His GPS took him to this training place from the hotel and he came back and he went. And one, one, one day coming back, the GPS gave him a different route. And he just happened to drive by Bethel Bible Baptist Church. 
Bible Baptist Church there in York, Pennsylvania. And uh, he goes, that was crazy. I just drove by this church, and it was right here by the hotel. He says, man, uh, I should probably go to that church on Wednesday. Yeah, if I don't have a long day Wednesday, maybe I can get cleaned up and go over there. And he was just like all of us, don't worry, but the day went a little bit long Wednesday, and he got home and started to rational like we would and go, man, I'm tired. It went longer than I thought. I can live stream the great Freedom Baptist Church and the way they, the way they do all that. And finally, Jimmy gets in and goes, you know what? I'm washing my face. I'm going to that church. And he goes to that church, and it said 7 o'clock because uh, he had seen a commercial for it on TV, I think, with a preacher preaching from that church. And he says, I'm going to that church. And he goes and gets there about 6.40 for the 7 o'clock service. And he walks in, and they're already preaching. So he feels a little bad, talks to a guy back there. He says, oh, we're having revival services this week. Up there right there preaching is Mike Clark. He and his brother, Charlie Clark, is going to preach next. And Jimmy goes, hey, I know Mike Clark. Remember Mike? He and his boys sang for us when they are on vacation, came through here and sang. And so all that to say this, when it got all done, uh, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy's a little shy. He really doesn't like talking to people. But uh, he wound up bumping into an assistant pastor there and finding out I'm from Freedom Baptist Church. And he says, I thought Pastor Trout was here. He says, oh, no, our, you know, it's a weird situation. You'll never eat. I don't know if you can understand, but, but our pastor resigned a little bit earlier than we had hoped for. He was here for 25 years and was going to retire a little bit later, but he just happened to retire here. So our pulpit committee is just trying to figure out what to do. And God used Jimmy to say, you know what, um, we had a pastor that was there for 20 and just started to go into the whole thing. And what may have been a difficult time for us to understand as members of Freedom Baptist Church, God used that situation for Brother Jimmy to be a help and comfort to another church who was just about going through the same exact thing. That's how God works. He allows us to go through trouble to be a comfort to others. He allows us to go through trouble to keep us humble. He allows us to go through trouble to help develop our character. 2 Corinthians 4, 11, 8 through 11. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that in the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. God allows us to go through trouble to teach us to pray. Jonah chapter 2 is all about him praying and asking for God to forgive him and to help him. Sometimes we go through trouble to teach us to pray. Sometimes we go through trouble to teach us to look for God's blessings in our lives. If we're not careful, we look so much at the trouble that we forget that there's a God way above it. I think the Ball brothers sing a song. It says, sometimes he calms the storm and other times he calms his child. We can look at the storm so much that we forget that the sun is shining. There's just a storm cloud between you and the sun. And Jesus, the Son of God, is always there. We're just looking at the storm a little bit too much. Teach us to look for God's blessings. I'm done, and I'll simply conclude by saying these three thoughts. With this trouble, you learn what I wrote down, three things. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. I knew what point number one was. And when we were singing every need supplied as a choir, I got a little bit excited. And then when the teen choir sang, Jesus never fails, I got a lot more excited. <laughs> and then to hear the special those girls sang. I often, I said this to our friends, I said, I don't know how unsaved people go through tough times like this. And I say that because Brother Jimmy and others who we've gone through some trouble here in the last three years with loss of loved one and things of that nature, I know what an encouragement it was to receive text messages, letters, and phone calls from these, your church members, but nothing can substitute that alone time when a child of God can just go to his heavenly father and say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to be a comfort. I don't know how I'm going to I don't know how I'm going to get through another day. 
And we realize it's not just about a religion, it's about our relationship. I'm also reminded that not just Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. I'm reminded that we are going to win in the end. Amen. There is a happily ever after. There is a, you're the winner. It's not always going to be trouble. And then thirdly, I put this down, God can turn any tragedy into triumph. God can turn any tragedy into triumph. I pray that the Freedom Baptist Church will unite as one to help one another when trouble comes to this church. I'm not saying we've ever been guilty. It's to be careful not to go, I can't believe they, but to say, what can we do to help? Brother Howes used to say, be kind to everybody because everybody's having a tough time. And we're real good at walking on this property going, hey, brother, hey, sister, God bless you. But we really don't know what's inside. So be careful with the words you speak. Be careful with the way you look at someone because you never know what they're going through. Just someone might be going through trouble. Tomorrow night and Friday night, there'll be scores of young people here who may be going through trouble. I pray that we can keep our eyes open and say, Lord, what can I do to help comfort them? Will you pray for the youth revival tomorrow night? Not just for those traveling here. Would you pray for your own children? Moms, dads, would you fast a meal tomorrow or Friday and just ask God to speak to your child and help them to hear the voice of God? It's about a relationship. Not because their name's on the membership of Freedom Baptist Church. Not because they're in the youth department of Freedom Baptist Church. Not because they live in Rural Hall or Winston or up in uh, King or Stokes County or wherever. It's all about the relationship. In this youth revival, I've been praying for God to strengthen my relationship with Him. For God to strengthen our relationships of our young people with their God. I pray you would do the same. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for this truth. Trouble's going to come. And I pray when this trouble comes that we could run to your arms, get help from you. And then, once we've been helped, to go find someone else who needs that same help. And it's not getting with us, it's us trying to connect them with the Father to strengthen that relationship. Thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you so much that your ear is not deaf unto our cry and your hand is right there to pull us up whenever we need you. I love you, God, and thank you for what you've done in my life. I pray you'll help me to pray more fervently for this church. I pray you'd help me and Mrs. Fredericks to continue to uh, uh, watch out for the pathway that these young people may be going down and to try to be a help to them. And God, help us to understand that ultimate compassion is their hurt and our heart. May we continue to think of that with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I ask all these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Let's stand to our feet. I'm just going to open the altar. There's no, no, no call, no this. I'll say this. If you're here tonight and don't know Christ as your Savior, would you trust Him tonight? And then I'll also say, if you're here and facing that day of trouble, can I say this? You don't need a Facebook post. You don't need someone to just, you know what you need? Same thing I needed. We need God. Strengthen that relationship. 